This is your president, folks, the commander in chief of the armed services, the man supposedly in charge of the nuclear football. How is this acceptable? Our nation is at risk every day that Joe Biden sits in the Oval Office. So if at all possible, what can Congress do about it? And can he, Joe, be held accountable for improperly handling classified documents? Joining me now to answer those questions and more as chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Kentucky Congressman James Comer. Chairman, good to have you. So the question is, hey, listen, let's do politics and then policy. For the for the politics, it couldn't have played into Trump's hands better for so many reasons. Joe Biden has to claim on national television in primetime last night that he's competent, which means he should be able to stand trial, or he has to admit that he's not competent, and then Trump basically wins this thing slam dunk. But what is the what would Congress be able to do if you wanted to? Well, I think that, uh, first of all, the Oversight Committee deserves a lot of credit because we were the ones that launched the investigation into Joe Biden's mishandling of classified documents. And I always believed that Merrick Garland appointed her as special counsel uh, to try to protect Joe Biden from the House Oversight Committee. We weren't investigating Joe Biden for mishandling classified documents because he was old and senile. We were investigating because we suspected that he had documents in there from China and uh, Ukraine. Now, what the report came out and said, obviously, it talked about his cognitive decline that we've all seen, but it also mentioned uh, it, different uh, emails and documents in there that did pertain to Ukraine and China. That's the whole basis of our investigation. So, to so, so, so man, 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 compromised you, because of all the money his family's taken from those two adversarial countries. So, I think one of the things that came out, and it didn't really come out, so it's a 385 page document. Um, but one of the things, and in, in, in the White House had some flunky uh, talking about how the, the, the report was wrong. One of the things that, ha that happened is that Biden talks to, uh, a, I think, an author of a book that, that was being written or something to that effect, and he admits to having classified documents in his possession and in his home. Here's the question. Can you subpoena that testimony or whatever the interview was? We want to hear what Biden admits to on tape, and, and for some reason, it's now being held behind closed doors. Absolutely. And we took steps today to start that process before you can uh, issue a subpoena that will be uh, uh, that will hold up in court. You have to t show a good faith effort to to get what you're requesting. So we've sent our first letter. We'll probably send a second letter and that'll be Jim Jordan and myself. Then we'll be in a position to, to issue the subpoena that will win in court. Look, this isn't over. Uh, the Democrats want to say it's over. It's not over. We need to know what exactly the transcripts say uh, to know the the level of mishandling of these classified documents, who he mishandled them with, uh, what part uh, his son uh, was involved with this, if her even asked about his son. And we need to know specifically which, uh, what documents were involved with Ukraine and China and all these other countries that have sent the Biden family tens of millions of dollars. I mean, this whole Biden investigation is the biggest political corruption scandal in, in my lifetime. It's all about public corruption. This family's been influenced peddling. We believe they're on the take. Uh, this special counsel report showed that Joe Biden uh, has not been truthful with the American people about these documents and the documents are center to our investigation. So we're going to do everything we can to get uh, the, the transcripts and to get the specific documents that were mishandled. And, you know, what's funny to me is the media was always cry, crying foul. Why wouldn't Comer uh, issue the transcripts of, of who he was deposing in the in the Biden investigation? We issued those transcripts within days of those depositions. You have to go over them and, and both sides and their lawyers have to, to edit and make sure everything in there is correct. The media is not saying anything about demanding to turn over the transcripts of this interview because they know this is the interview from hell for Joe Biden. Whatever Joe Biden told her, he was having to talk and he was struggling and he couldn't remember anything and he was just flat out lying. So we're going to get those transcripts and we took steps today to begin that process. Got about a minute or so. So lost in all this because there's so much news. Yesterday was an amazingly huge, massive breaking news day. Tell us where we stand. Hunter Biden says he's willing to cooperate. Is he going to cooperate? Are you going to get your, your deposition behind closed doors or in public? Where does that stand? 
Absolutely. I'm going to get everything I wanted. We're, we're going to depose Hunter Biden. It'll be at least an eight-hour deposition. We'll be able to ask him hundreds of questions. Uh, we've got tens of thousands of pages of bank documents with suspicious transfers uh, between uh, our adversarial countries and the Biden family. We want to know what those were for. Uh, we're also going to interview James Biden. So over the next three weeks, the House Oversight Committee is going to either interview or depose under oath Tony Bobulinski, James Biden, and Hunter Biden. So we've got a big three weeks in the House Oversight Committee with respect to the Biden influence peddling investigation. Well, as we say in TV, stay tuned, folks, because it's going to get interesting very quickly. House Oversight Chairman James Comer, thank you for joining us.